Broken iPod Productions presents a look at my vintage 2000 Nokia 5185i Verizon cell phone that I just got in the mail just a few minutes ago. You can't see too well, but it's still snowing outside. There's still snow on the tree outside. Now right off the bat, let me start off by saying I dislike cell phones in general. The audio quality is absolutely abysmal, and uh, I just really have a strong aversion to them. I much prefer using an actual landline when I actually can. not However, there have been a few situations in this past year that I've actually had to make an emergency phone call or two and uh, wasn't able to do so because I didn't happen to have a cell phone. And of course, with payphones all but having disappeared, there's really no other alternative than to actually buy a cell phone. Back in 2001 or maybe even 2002, this was the very first cell phone I ever owned, just like this, except it was actually by AT&T. And in fact, I actually still have that cell phone. If I look around, it should be in this drawer right where I'm videotaping. Let's see if I happen to be fortunate enough to pull it out of this junk drawer. I just dug this out for the video and then stupidly put it away. Unfortunately, it no longer works, and that's one of the reasons why I stopped using it as my main phone back in around uh, 2003 or 2004. Was this was subject to a liquid spill. The button up here, you could tell, was definitely uh, it's stuck in place. You could hear that pop there, something sticky got all in the buttons here and ended up ruining this phone. It no longer works, unfortunately. All these years later, I've held on to this phone, pretty much just for posterity, but also just to keep it as something of a relic of times past. But now I no longer need to do that. Because now I have this phone, the Nokia 5185i. This was from Verizon, and it's almost the exact same phone. It's just a slightly newer model and has a charcoal gray exterior faceplate, whereas the other one has like a dark ocean blue color. On the back we have the battery. This is a very small battery. If I remove this, it's actually smaller than that other phone I just chucked across the room a moment ago. This is type BL... BL8-2N. It's a 3.6 volt battery. And the weight of this, I'd say, is close to two AAA batteries. That's how amazingly like this battery is. I'm surprised it even holds the charge. Here we look at the model number again, model number 5185IVB. This of course being for the Verizon network, but they also sold other models that were for Altel, AT&T, and other carriers, and some of them even were just generic models that just said digital up down here on this where this little badge would be. And this old phone has a slightly larger battery being a BMS-2S. It's a 3.6 volt battery, but if we can't compare this battery, if I get this out of the way, flip this one down here, we can see that this battery is actually a fair bit larger than the one that's on the bottom, just by taking a look at it. Compare this ridge to this one. So I may see if this one actually holds a charge, but for some reason it has old written on it. I didn't do that. I think this was an aftermarket battery I bought somewhere, I'm not quite sure. That was a very long time ago. But one thing I know for certain is that this phone works completely. There's no problems with it whatsoever. The seller was nice enough to throw in some manuals here. One for the Nokia 5190, which I don't have in my possession and wasn't sold to me, so I guess he may have just thrown these in or perhaps he confused these for the uh, this model, I'm not too sure. We have those to look through, and they're pretty much the exact same, the different model numbers, they're all pretty much one and the same. They all have the same design, the same layout pretty much, there's only a few features that change between the models, and of course which cellular carriers you could use them with. This one happens to be for the Nokia 5185i, and a decade and a half later it is still sealed in its plastic packaging. I find that pretty impressive, but remember when people used to walk around proudly displaying their phones on their persons? What all these different colors they had? Green, red, and looks like you get the whole Christmas time covered. And then over here we have the DC power adapter. This is model number ACP-7U. A very small barrel connector. So I'm glad this was included because I don't actually have any chargers that would have fit this phone. And we have a very cheap and flimsy, I wouldn't even doubt this uh, being a cheap knockoff charger. But it's for cars anyway, and it's good to have. Looks like it's never even been used. 
Unfortunately, most modern cell phone carriers no longer allow you to activate or reactivate these phones on their networks because they have no E911 capabilities. So let's say you were to call emergency services by dialing 911 and you were unable to speak. This phone would not be able to send the dispatcher your current location because it has no GPS capabilities. So for that reason, many, many major cell phone carriers do not allow you to activate these phones anymore. But there are still some grandfathered users. I think it's something close to 2 or 3% of the total uh, Verizon cell phones that are still on their network. Uh, still have no E911 capabilities. And so for that case, you're completely okay. As long as you don't change phones, you'll be good to go. That the phone will stay active and working on their service. And this phone happens to be one of those few cell phones that still works with Verizon all these years later. And that's exactly why I purchased it. The power button is located up here. I'll power it on. Over here is your speaker for the ringtone. Now it's going to search for service. We're connected to the Verizon network. This is actually a dual band phone. It was able to work on the analog amps network that was very popular in the 80s, 90s, and very early 2000s. But it can also work, and this is one of the reasons why I bought it, with the new digital networks of today. Hence the D on the display right here. Now this envelope icon indicates that there is a message waiting for us, either in text form or a voicemail. It's gone ahead and synced up a time with uh, Verizon's network, 8, 11 p.m. We have full service and two bars of battery life remaining. And apparently this handy cam is complaining of a low battery, so I will be back in just a moment. Okay, that's much better. Here's a look at the monochromatic display, now with the backlight on. And for more effect, I'll take it over here where it's a bit darker, and you can see it does a very good job of illuminating the buttons as well as the screen itself. Let's take a look at the menu quickly. I'm not going to show the phone book nor the call logs because that actually has the previous owner's information in there. Key guard was a feature I used very often back when I had this phone originally, some 14 or so years ago. And it would lock your keypad so you couldn't pocket dial. You'd have to press unlock and the star key and that would unlock your phone. We have messages, which is how you would access your voicemail and your text messages. This phone is actually so old that it can't send out text messages. You can only receive them, but that's not a problem for me since I don't text. Voice messages, we can listen to our voicemail box and find our voicemail box number. We can even program a welcome note. I remember a lot of people did this, so when you turn your phone on, it'll show you some kind of a welcome message that you send, that you program it to here. We have our settings here for different things. And one thing that I did have to change in this phone is the touch tone length. It was set to continuous and that was probably all well and good 15 years ago. But unfortunately with most automated systems, IVR systems as they're properly referred to, do not like when you have continuous DTMF tones. They just won't work at all when you press the button. They have to be set to a fixed length. That's exactly what I did in the menu and now this works just perfectly with automated systems. There's a few other options in here. I'm not going to go through all of them. In the interest of keeping this video's length to a somewhat manageable amount, I'm not going to go through all of the settings in depth. Let me take it over here. That's a bit better. We can restrict calls. We can program in access codes. We can restrict incoming or outgoing calls. Network services. We can program voice privacy, NAM selection, and games. I fondly remember the game Snake on here. I played this game very often back then definitely was a uh, it's a nostalgic game for me now and it's fun to be able to actually play it on a working phone and of course when you lose well you get a top score and you can get your last view and it will show you what you did to mess up your last game in this case the snake started eating itself we have the clock you can use this as an alarm clock the time has synced up again with the network so no, no need to manually set it and my favorite part of the phone the tones menu we go in here, we could set which way we want this to ring. I leave it at just ring, I don't want it to ascend. And here we have all of the famous Nokia ringtones. The famous Nokia tune. We go up here. There's some songs in here. I'm gonna figure out which one is my favorite. No, 
I think it's uh, polite. That's that was always my favorite ringtone. Oh, I remember when so many people had this as their ringtone. <laughs> Piano Concerto, Mozart, 40. A lot of people have this as their ringtone. And this one. Uh, there's so many in here, I could spend probably close to 10 minutes. But another one that I didn't hear many people use back then was this one. This is a pretty cool sounding ringtone, though, if you ask me. And I also have this set to level 4. Level 5 is the loudest, but... It's also ear piercing, although you do kind of want this thing to be loud since there's no vibrate when it when somebody calls you, it won't actually vibrate. And we have a couple other things we can program in the message alert tone, the keypad tones, warning and game tones, and that's really all there is to it. This is a very basic no frills phone, very simple, very basic. And now what I'm going to do is dial the service number for my cellular carrier which happens to be pound 737 I'm not calling a regular phone number because this is a prepaid plan I'm using and I really don't want to waste minutes if I don't have to but I will call this and we should be able to hear it ring Welcome yep and it is and now what we can do is enter our phone number and I'll show you that it transfers over to their call care center I guarantee their call center is closed because it's a Sunday, but probably still get a message that says that they're unavailable. Oh, no, they're open, but uh, they're unavailable, so I'll go ahead and end this call, which you can do by actually going into your phone options while you're in a call. You can end all calls, modify your touch tones, your menu, phone book, mute, flash, and end all calls. That's what I'll do right now. For some reason, when you first hang up the call, the cell service goes all the way down, then it pops right back up. I'm not sure what causes that, but it doesn't affect its operation. And again, let's take a look at its retractable antenna. I've actually been using this phone for about a week now before I actually did this video. And I could tell you that having a retractable antenna actually comes in very handy when you're in an extremely low service area, otherwise referred to as a fringe area and this will help you get uh, a decent amount of cellular service so that your phone doesn't keep cutting in and out I've actually been in a few scenarios where there is cell service but it's not particularly good or strong and so when you'll be talking to the other person it'll get garbled and staticky and this will pretty much help and solve most of those problems unless of course there's no service to begin with and another thing that I found particularly cool about these phones and I still do to this day is the ability to change their face plates. You press this little button here, and I'll actually use this phone just because I don't want to keep messing up this phone since it works completely. And what we do is you press this button right here, and you can remove this front face plate. And it's this way that you can change your face plates. I remember many people had the camouflage faceplate that was extremely popular. You can see this one is badge for AT&T with the old AT&T Globe logo. This one is for Verizon and many of these phones were also generic. They were they just said digital down here because they didn't want to discriminate which carrier you could use. I think you could even buy them and change them yourself. I'll go ahead and dial the number now. And if all goes well, it should ring. Let me see if I can show you this now without revealing my caller ID. So you can see that we are receiving a phone now. And this phone works perfectly. And if you get a call that you don't want to hear, you just press the C button. That'll mute it. You'll still see notification on the screen that they're calling you, but you won't keep having the ringer go off. And this phone will just keep ringing to infinity, so I'll hang it up because I have voicemail shut off on the cell phone. Which I was pretty surprised that I could still do. I just called up Verizon, told them I wanted the voicemail disabled, and with no problems at all, they disabled it. So now this phone behaves pretty much the same way a regular landline does. 
and that when somebody calls me, it'll just keep ringing and ringing and ringing, and it won't time out after 30 seconds and go to a voicemail message. You can see we have one missed call. We press the power button to shut this off. We're presented with a few different options. We can switch off normal, silent, quiet, or loud modes of operation. But if we just want to get lazy, we could also just hold this button. It'll accomplish the same thing. So this is now going to be my main cell phone for the very long foreseeable future. Snow, cold, very cold, and more snow.